spiritual gifts eagerly desire spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 to 1 We must learn the importance of spiritual gifts and seek them as the Bible admonishes us to do. We are told to eagerly desire spiritual gifts. In the dark kingdom they earnestly desire spiritual gifts. They know that with spiritual gifts comes power and it is upon power, money and control that the dark kingdom perpetuates itself. A human being who works as an agent of the devil in West Africa knows that the means to wealth and success in this world is to possess spiritual gifts and more power than anyone else. They want more power. And if Satan has no power as we have been taught, why do these people seek power from him? How could you obtain something from someone who didn't have what you were seeking? Why is it we have had the idea in Christianity that Satan has no power? We have had the foolish idea that God restrains Satan to the point where he has no power. God does what you do. God performs his word. It is only through our knowledge of his word and spiritual warfare that the dark kingdom can be restrained. This is what the Father desires. But we have been taught the erroneous idea that God's restraint of Satan is automatic. Nothing could be further from the truth. God has left us weapons, spiritual weapons to win our conflicts. But if we do not pick them up and use them, he cannot help us. Consider the book of Job. While it is true that God had placed a protective hedge around Job, when the devil was able to attack Job and his family, he did so with impunity. Even more interesting was what the devil did. If he has no power as we have been taught, then how was he able to accomplish the supernatural things he did that are mentioned in Job? Do we not see that he was able to control the weather and sent fire from heaven? Did you know that members of the Dark Kingdom in Nigeria are able to kill using the weather, in particular lightning? The fact is that the great power of Satan and the Dark Kingdom has been downplayed by the church for years. This is largely due to ignorance about their real power. We have spiritualized the truth by not having any facts and using the scripture, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world to minimize worrying about Satan's power. And it is only when we know the truth about the power of the devil and confront the dark kingdom that our perspective about how we deal with him will change. He is perfectly content to let us go merrily along believing he has no power. As long as we think the opposing army is powerless, we won't even bother to send out a reconnaissance patrol. We must engage the enemy in spiritual warfare or lose the war by default. This is the reason for the sad state of the church today. Our ignorance has been bliss for the dark kingdom. We have talked about salvation, healing, faith and many other things. We have fought over doctrine, heresy, and everything else. But we have not realized we are in a very difficult spiritual war. We keep waiting for the Lord to return and rescue us. Meanwhile, he is waiting on us to engage the enemy with the weapons he has given to us for the battle. When we learn the facts about the dark kingdom, their spiritual gifts, and what it takes to stop them, it places a whole new perspective on not only our thinking, but also our action. Just remember, the devil is a being without mercy. He has none. This is hard for us to comprehend because even the worst human being, someone such as Saddam Husn, will normally have some mercy. Satan does not. Just because we are ignorant about him or we don't want to get involved in spiritual warfare does not mean he will not attack. In fact, quite the opposite is true. The more you do know about his kingdom and how he attacks, the better you will be able to overcome him and his demons. This has especially been brought home to me in deliverance ministry because we are able to recognize cases of possession that we could not a few years ago. Yes, the dark kingdom possesses much power. A human being who works as an agent of the devil knows that the means to success is power and that this power comes from their master, Satan, through his giving them spiritual gifts. There are literally thousands of magic charms which are in use to give power to the one possessing the charm. We in the enlightened West have always looked upon such things as being nonsense and superstition, but the truth is that these charms work. They do what they are designed to do. Of course the real power is not in the charm, but in the spiritual force or forces behind the charm. These spiritual forces are of course demonic, but the point is that they do possess great power contrary to what we have been led to think. Consider the following testimony from my close friend, Evangelist Emmanuel Amabage a former powerful member of the Dark Kingdom, my struggle to get rich by any means did not end there. Despite these sufferings that I had undergone I continued to search for other ways. I went to Ikir in a cocoa division of the present Ondo state to a man who knew about making money, and who claimed he could help me. This terrible man, the nature of his job prohibits him from seeing the light of the sun. Any day he would come out, it must rain so that the rays of the sun would be covered, for this man said that the rays of the sun must never dry his clothes. So his abode was made in an underground tunnel. We were six in number who went to consult this man on the same issue. He asked us, what type of money do you wish to have? He then began to show us the different methods by which men get rich quickly in the dark world. Some of us said, any type would do. He brought out something and asked each of us to swallow. I told him that he must explain it fully to me before I can do such a thing as he had said. He put the thing up he had earlier offered and continued another. He took a hand and tied one of its legs to a stick with a short rope. 
With very powerful incantations, he prepared a big fire directly opposite the hen a few distances away. He then came back and put some maize grains in between the burning fire and the hen tied down. With a sharp knife in his hand, he cut the rope with which he had tied the hen. The hen thus released, ran forward to the maze, swallowed about six grains quickly and dashed into the burning fire and was consumed. The message is very simple and it is this, the man explained to us. Anyone who gets rich by this method would be rich and very famous for as many years as the number of grains the hen swallowed. The person will also end up in a similar fashion as did the hen, in hellfire one as you can see from this testimony. There is power available in charms. In this case it was for wealth. There are charms available to make one instantly rich, but look at the price. We can also learn from this how the devil can use poverty as a means to obtain members for the dark kingdom. In many areas of the world, people have lived so long in poverty that they are desperate for wealth. It is an all-consuming desire that they will attempt to gain at any cost. Even damnation and hell. Most of the charms to acquire wealth or power involve the shedding of human blood. Normally the person seeking wealth or power is called upon to sacrifice their children or parents. Many gladly do so. And Satan always makes certain that the person seeking the spiritual gift does the killing. He uses this additional hook to keep the person full of guilt and in spiritual bondage. If they try to leave the dark kingdom later, he will ruthlessly remind them of all these atrocities they have performed and tell them there is no hope for them. Many of these people are held through fear and will not receive the truth although they want to be delivered. But the main reason we have had such difficulty in understanding spiritual gifts within the church is because of our lack of understanding concerning the spirit world in general. We hear the word spirit world in our minds picture one Amabejsu. Emmanuel, my conversion, share at Audio Visual Enterprises Nigeria, limited, something hazy or perhaps we see angels on a cloud with harps or halos. Think for a moment before you continue. Let your mind bring a picture of what your concept is of the spirit world. Spiritual matters have not been real to us. We have largely only known and understood physical things. This is one reason my African minister friends who come here to stay with me have difficulty understanding why we are so ignorant about the spirit world. We have difficulty comprehending and accepting the work of the dark kingdom because these concepts are foreign to us as a result of our lack of knowledge about the spirit world. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. 1 Corinthians 12 to 1 If the Holy Spirit did not want the church at Corinth ignorant about spiritual gifts, then he does not want the church today to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. One reason the dark kingdom is so successful against us is because the church as a whole is very ignorant about spiritual gifts whereas they are not. We will discuss these spiritual gifts later in the book. They include tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, faith, working of miracles, discerning of spirits, gifts of healings, word of knowledge, and word of wisdom. The point to be made here is that before we can understand and utilize the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to each of us, we must know something about spiritual matters. For example, if I were to give you the gift of a scuba diving outfit, you would have to know something about the underwater world in order to use this gift. In addition, you would have to know how to use the gift before you took it into the undersea world. Likewise are the gifts of the Spirit. We must know both something about the world of spirits as well as what the gifts are and how they operate, because I have taught on these gifts and their activation for many years. I can say from my experience that there are at least two of these gifts that predominate in each Christian. All nine may operate through you, but at least two or three will be dominant. However, if you are not aware of these gifts and, or you are not sure how they function, then they will not manifest through you even though it is God's desire for you to operate in all nine spiritual gifts. Indeed, they are designed primarily for spiritual combat, but our lack of understanding of both the environment of the spirit world and the operation of these gifts has caused the church to be weak. Why is the church weak today? Because the individual members of the body are weak. If you break this down even further to your individual church, the same holds true. Your church is weak because you and the other members of that church are weak. Consider the following scripture, for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. 
1 Corinthians 12 14 25 When you read this scripture, does it sound like God has any spiritual elite in the church? No, we are all necessary to the body and he wants all of us to understand and operate in spiritual gifts, not just the preachers. And if you are not knowledgeable about spiritual gifts, and you do not exercise those gifts God has placed within you, then the body is weak because you are weak. In order for the body to be strong, it is necessary that each part, each church member, know his place in order to function effectively. If you are weak and ignorant concerning spiritual gifts, then the whole body will be weak. You might respond that it is the fault of the ministers that you are weak. This is partially true, but ultimately, it is your responsibility to learn about spiritual gifts and how they function. God will hold you responsible for the development and exercise of all the gifts he has given you. If your pastor does not teach on these gifts, then get some books or CD messages and learn yourself. God will hold you responsible and you need this knowledge. And concerning the spirit world, consider our worship services. The Lord admonished us to worship God in spirit and in truth. If we do not understand spiritual things, how can we even worship God? The answer is plainly evident that we cannot. There is little true worship today. What we call worship services are not worship at all. They should more correctly be called song services with no anointing and no worship. As we learn more about spiritual things in the spirit, our services will change for the better. We simply must increase our intelligence in these areas of understanding. What is the problem and how do we solve it? In spiritual matters, just the same as in physical matters, one cannot solve a problem until it has first been defined. And we cannot define the problem in physical terms. We must come to know and understand spiritual terms. This we have been unable to do. The purpose of spiritual gifts now. Let us consider the purpose of spiritual gifts. In the dark kingdom, a person is given a spiritual gift for only one reason, to make war against the saints of God. Spiritual gifts are coveted for their power and ability to bring wealth to those possessing them, but the real purpose is to attack the kingdom of God and the church specifically. God has also given spiritual gifts to help us withstand those employed by the dark kingdom. Our problem has been we have not understood this truth nor other truths of the gospel. We have pretty much majored on the theme of salvation and forgotten about the rest of the Bible. Salvation is important of course, but it is only after one obtains salvation that he becomes a real threat to the devil. Consequently, it is only then that a person needs spiritual gifts in order to thwart the attacks of the enemy against self and family. The Lord told us that the three reasons the devil always comes in our lives is to steal, kill and destroy. John 10:10. 10, 10, although the Spirit is sounding a clear note from the trumpet, for the most part in the church world today we see that it has not been heard as an uncertain sound. One of the major problems is our not understanding the various roles in the church. There are three divisions in God's army, praying, paying and preaching. Which division are you in? And we have not properly understood the function of each division nor how each is organized. For example, consider the preaching division. There are five offices mentioned in the Bible, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist. We have neither recognized nor have we understood the function or anointing of each. Basically, we have only recognized and understood one of the five, the pastor. Yes, we hear about the evangelist and the teacher, but we have not understood these offices in their entirety. We have relegated the teacher to being someone who teaches Sunday school instead of the prominent ministerial position, with its special anointing that the Bible implies. We have said that the offices of apostle and prophet passed away after the early church was established, a view not supported by scripture. Where does it say that these offices passed away? This is an illogical conclusion. If we recognize the offices of pastor, evangelist and teacher, then we should realize that the prophet and apostle are still around as well. And Ephesians 2.20 and 4.11.13 supports this view. Just consider the following. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other prophets judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. 1 Corinthians 14.29.30 This scripture implies that there should be prophets in the church and in each individual church. Where are they? What is their function in the church today? What should apostles be doing in the church today? Briefly, these five offices may be defined as follows. 1. Pastor, he is the shepherd of the local church and is primarily responsible for the care and feeding of the sheep. 2. Evangelist, this minister has a special anointing from God to preach salvation and see the sinner come to Christ. This office also is one where we see many instances of divine healing and working of miracles. These two gifts of the Spirit, gifts of healings and working of miracles, seem to be dominant in the ministry of the evangelist. A good biblical example is Philip in Acts 8. 3. Teacher, this ministry gift and office includes a special anointing to understand and teach the Word of God. It is from this office that we learn what the Word is saying. 4. Prophet. The prophet is God's trumpet. Prophets are those through whom God can and does speak to the church. This office has prophecy. 
and the revelation gifts of the Spirit as dominant gifts. 5. Apostle, the Greek word, apostolos, literally means a sent one. Apostles, as well as prophets, are more fully discussed later. Apostles, along with prophets, are the foundational offices of the church and they have ultimate accountability for the church government and structure. When it comes to spiritual gifts and offices, our thinking needs re-examination. If you will spend a year or two simply studying the structure and government of the early church, you will see that we are not functioning in the way the Lord first established the church. In addition to the five offices, consider the mission of the local church. What has God called each one to do? There are too many which the Lord never established. In order to pastor or stand in any of the five offices, a person must be called and anointed by the Lord for that particular office. You cannot call yourself, although many try. Some churches obviously exist so that the pastor's hobby of preaching can be practiced. Others are established for various other reasons. Unfortunately, most churches today are simply small business enterprises. Ministry used to be a calling, and true ministry still is, but now most of it is just another vocation, another business as the Holy Spirit told me in 1997. Many evangelists start churches for financial support. This is wrong. You can only be successful if God calls you to do it, because when He calls you, He also anoints you and it is this anointing which makes the venture successful. You cannot anoint yourself. You'd really be surprised if you knew how many churches exist that were not ordained by God. And you'd be surprised how many pastors have no idea what their church is there to achieve. They may give the stock answers of preaching the gospel or saving the lost. But closer examination reveals they have no clear mandate from God. But if we can learn something about spiritual things, and especially how the five-fold offices function, we will be in a position once again to restore the church to its proper order and mission in the world. Our concept today is to preach evangelistic sermons and get people saved. Yet the early church appears to have spent more time ministering to one another and to the Lord in church services. They preached the salvation message outside the church. There is a place, of course, for such preaching in the local church if the Spirit so directs. But we must realize that sinners, by and large, do not come to church. You cannot win the world or even your own town by only preaching salvation in church on Sunday. The unsaved aren't there. They're at the lake skiing or on the golf course, not in church. The secret to successful ministry, of course, is to get the mind of the Holy Spirit and see what He wants to do. However, the worship service time should be dedicated primarily to worshiping God along with teaching and equipping the church to minister to the community and the world. This is why we are building training centers in Africa, Asia and America as opposed to just churches. When people are trained and operating in the gifts of the Spirit as well as the five-fold offices to which they have been called, then the world can be one to the Lord. And the first item on the agenda which we must learn is spiritual discernment. We must be able to properly understand spiritual matters and gifts. We may know we're in a spiritual battle from Ephesians 6.12, but what do we do about it? We know our struggle is against wicked spirits, but so what? We must learn to obey the Bible and walk in the Spirit. Our minds cannot help us, except as a channel to develop our spirits. The human mind and our born-again, recreated human spirits are in conflict. We cannot believe our minds or we will miss the Spirit every time. No, we must learn to obey the Bible and walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5.25 But what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? The Holy Spirit opened this scripture up to me in 1980. He said, Spend much time praying in the Spirit. And as you pray in the Spirit, you will walk in the Spirit and spiritual things will become more real to you than earthly things. When he says pray in the Spirit, we know from the Bible he is referring to the Pentecostal experience of praying in other tongues. We know this from a careful study of Acts, Jude and the Pauline epistles. So then, the chief way we can learn about spiritual matters and gifts is to pray in the Spirit or with other tongues. We are praying in the Spirit because we are praying with our spirits as opposed to our minds. If you are not convinced or this is new to you, do some studying in Romans 8 and I Corinthians. We will also discuss this further when discussing spiritual weapons. It is strange, however, that even among Pentecostals who have received what they term their prayer language or the ability to speak in other tongues, most do not spend much time praying in this manner. We see, however, Paul spent much time praying in other tongues and it is my belief this is one of the secrets to the revelation knowledge he received from the Lord. This is very important and needs further study by every Christian. How the gifts come for years we have had the idea in the church that God just chooses certain people at random and gives them particular gifts such as the revelation knowledge he gave Paul. Nothing can be farther from the truth. In my own case, I have absolutely no doubt that the only reason God has brought about the circumstances in my life to learn about the dark kingdom is because of prayer. Had I not begun praying many years ago, God I want to know more about the devil, God show me the dark kingdom, I want to know how Satan operates, this knowledge would not have come. God answers prayer. There appear to be few accidents in the spirit world. 
Charles Finney, a great man of prayer and greatly used by God, once remarked, I have had some experiences in prayer which truly alarmed me. God answers prayer. I have seen prayers answered that I had prayed ten years before and forgotten about until their manifestation came. God is amazing. And if you want to know more about him in the world of the spirits, begin to ask him. After I began to pray this way, it was about three years before I received any revelation about the dark kingdom. Then one night God gave me a night vision where I was looking down on a boardroom. There were three demons there and they had a map of the Houston area. They were discussing a man I knew and what he would be doing that day along with their plans to harm him. From this point on the knowledge has increased but I am firmly convinced that the reason is because of prayer. God wants to help us and he will, especially if we will use that knowledge to help others in the church. Once we learn to see things spiritually, we are on the right track toward becoming victorious in spiritual warfare. We will then be able to see the dark kingdom as it truly is and not as we have been deceived into thinking it is. Satan thrives on ignorance. He wants to keep us in the dark regarding his activities and operations so we cannot stop him. He wants us to continue to believe the enemy in our life is physical and not spiritual, your husband or wife, the president, your congressman, or the neighbors. It is time we recognize our lack of understanding in the spiritual realm and begin to correct this deficiency at once. The information contained in this book will only be a first step, but it will give you the necessary tools to increase your spiritual acumen. As you finish this chapter, make a resolution that you will spend at least one hour a day praying in the Spirit. If you have never spoken in tongues, find someone who can assist you in receiving and spend time daily in prayer, in addition to increasing your spiritual acumen. This gift is truly one of the most powerful weapons you can develop for use against the Dark Kingdom. This is why Satan has fought so hard to discredit the Pentecostal experience. The devil is very involved in every area of our lives today in not only the secular world, but also the church. It is only when we recognize his actions and operations that we can define a plan of action to dethrone him from our lives. Dealing with spiritual problems overseas where we see great manifestations of the devil's power has made me acutely aware of how the Dark Kingdom has infiltrated America as well. The church has been ignorant about the power and operations of the Dark Kingdom for too long. It is time we awake from our sleep, become spiritual calebs and say, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Numbers 1330 God has equipped all in his family through his covenant just like he did David. Every man in Israel was in covenant with God but only David exercised his privileges. Only David had the faith to go up against Goliath. We know the story too well. That is our problem. But put yourself in David's place in those days. He did not have the Bible to read the outcome with Goliath beforehand. He had to trust and believe in God through his faith while looking at a ten-foot-tall soldier who was cursing him and telling him he would feed his body to the birds. We have similar problems and trials today, and it is only through our faith that we, like David, can be overcomers. It is my sincere prayer that your faith will be inspired to learn more about spiritual matters and enter into spiritual combat even as David did. This is God's desire for your life as well. He loves you abundantly and wants you to prosper in this life as well as the one to come. And in order to truly prosper, you need spiritual knowledge and the spiritual gifts that God has for you. And you need to allow the Holy Spirit to manifest His gifts through you to a sin-sick, crying, dying world. On May 7, 2010, the Lord woke me up and said, Most Christians manifest evil spirits more than they do the Holy Spirit. Then I heard the words of the Apostle Paul, Men and brethren, these things ought not to be. We need to cleanse ourselves of all that is unholy and not of God. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to manifest His anointing through us to help others. That is God's purpose for each of us. That is true ministry. When we allow the Holy Spirit to manifest through us then others see the fulfillment of Colossians 1:27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thanks for watching please if you like the content subscribe for more videos like this.